All right, let's discuss this further with journalist and editor Martin J. Martin, it's good to have you join me now. But how do you see the situation in the Homo Strait developing? I, I see it as a, as, as a, as a certain um, tension which is building now and which we will see more of. This is now... This is now the escalation on the other side. You know, we had a lot, lot of talk about escalation created by America and Israel um, regionally, but now the Iranians are starting to um, take control and and to hit back. And I think um, there shouldn't be any great surprise in the Straits of Hormuz, which is a very narrow point in the Persian yeah. Gulf. They've warned that they'll do this in the past, and uh, I think we can expect a lot more. I mean, just simply uh, the hijacking of one ship is, is really the tip of the iceberg. I think much more is coming in the coming days. Now, Israel has called on the EU to recognize Iranian Guard Corps as terrorist organization and impose sanctions on Iran after the ship's hijacking. What do you make of this reaction against the backdrop of the recent attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus? Um, it's a pretty lame thing to say, really. Um, sanctions haven't really worked against Iran um, for a number of years because the whole point about sanctions is unless you have the real force to impose secondary sanctions on a number of global south countries, for example, um, unless you can do that, then sanctions just backfire. And we've seen this with Iran now. Iran is now selling uh, almost the same level of oil that it was selling in 2015, you know, because secondary sanctions um, Trump could not enforce and the Biden administration certainly couldn't. So the idea of Israel now calling on sanctions to Iran or, or the Revolutionary Guard is, is rather lame, somewhat pathetic and, you know, ridiculous, really, given that, you know, it's um, we should never forget what really pushed Iran over a line. Just a few days ago, the Israelis hit the Iranian consulate in Damascus, and that was definitely... Um, going over a line. And I think, uh, you know, if you imagine uh, any Western nation having the same thing happen to them, imagine if Hamas, for example, had put it, blown up a, a, a European Union consulate in Damascus, imagine the number of people in Europe would be, who would be calling for blood now. So I think uh, no great surprises. But to answer your question, I think uh, too little, too late. Hmm. Now, what do you make of Israel hurling a terrorist accusation at Iran's military while the IDF is being investigated so far for carrying out a genocide in Gaza? Yeah, I mean, we, we can't really um, think too much into this. I, I think it was pretty predictable that uh, the Israelis would go down that line and try and stir up more hatred against Iran because there is a good number of people out there in the West, um, in Congress, um, in America and in, in various parliaments in Europe, particularly in the British Parliament, who just loathe Iran and hate Iran and aren't really prepared to look at the nuances or look at the facts. They just want, they have an agenda against Iran. So that this is really what this is all about. This is feeding into a certain narrative. But I don't think it's going to have that much impact. I think now the people who should really be having sleepless nights would be the Biden administration and the British government um, also, because you know Cameron, the foreign minister in London, has practically pleaded with the Iranians in the last 24 hours to not retaliate, not to do anything. Um, and Anthony Blinken, the same thing in America, you know, because once you know the critical thing is once Iran reacts, and I think they will in the next couple of days. I think there will be strikes, tactical strikes within Israel. Once that happens, of course, you know you have that tipping point moment, which only. People of my generation could even imagine as being a World War III scenario. It's, it's no longer a nightmare. It's a reality unfolding, unfortunately. Hmm. Now, we've seen multiple announcements of a possible Iranian military response, like you have said, to the recent Israeli attack on their consulate. Does this seizure point to Tehran opting to use economic means instead? No, I think Tehran is, is, is putting a number of uh, pressure points forward. You know, so... Um, because they see the light at the end of the, at the end of the tunnel, they, they see that um, if there is some sort of conflict which sparks off in the next couple of days, if it's contained, and I stress that, if it's contained, then there will be a certain back-channel negotiation between America um, and the Iranians. And there will be, you know, the Iranian is looking for a number of points um, to use as ammunition on their side, you know, leverage, if you like. So I think um, hijacking the ships in the Straits of Hormuz is, is one of those points uh, to negotiate. And it might turn out to be, in the longer term, a quite important one if more ships are captured or even destroyed. Hmm.
All right, we have to leave you here now. Journalist and editor Martin J. Thank you so much for your insight. Now, the spread of tension in the